What's up, poker people? My name is Wes, and this is my poker vlog. Today's vlog covers a 5-5 No Limit Cash Game session at Texas Card House. This session was insane. Take a look. This is for entertainment only. I am not a professional poker player. I'm not trying to be a poker coach. I'm trying to share the fun of the games I'm playing. Enjoy the action. I bought into the game for $3,000, and I'll tell you what, I am more excited about doing the commentary on this episode than I have ever been before doing an episode. This game was insane. So I raised with Jack-10 suited. There was one limper under the gun. When someone limps and I have a good hand, I just act like they're not even there other than maybe adding an extra five bucks for the raise, but I'm not gonna suddenly just check Jack-10 just because one guy limps. So I raised Jack-10 suited. I flop a pretty good flop. You definitely want to bet this flop with a hand like Jack-10. Got top pair and an open ender. I might check this flop if I had something like aces, kings, or queens because I couldn't stand a raise, but if this guy raises me, I don't really care. He calls, we go to the turn, and it's a queen. So I make a straight immediately. The only hand that can beat me now is King Jack. Sure, he could have King Jack, but I'm not going to stop betting. And even if he were to raise me, I would still call. So I'm going to bet 110. And if he calls, I'm still going to bet the river if a brick comes. I should have the best hand here probably something like 80 to 90% of the time. I mean, how often can he really have King Jack? He could also have a hand like I have, a pair and a Jack. A hand like Jack nine or Jack eight. And the river is the deuce of diamonds. So now there's three diamonds. He was pretty passive with just calling. He could have a diamond draw. The villain only has 300 behind, and on this river, although I was going to put them all in, I thought, man, maybe there are some times that he has King Jack and just checks behind. So I decided to check, and I'm probably going to call any bet, and he goes all in for 300, and suddenly, I'm not feeling so confident. Mainly it's because I've never seen this guy bluff before, and that's running through my head. He just always seems to have it. He seems to be waiting for it and then has it. So I wasn't sure what to do. I didn't think for a while and finally I was like, you know what, if you got it, you got it. And I slammed the money on the table. He announced ace high. I just sat there cause I'm not turning my cards up. He mucked and I won the hand. So I guess I learned my lesson from a few episodes ago where I folded a straight and was shown king 10 high on a three club board. About an hour into the session and I'm up about $1,000. So this guy joined our game. Isn't that Mike Postel? That's Mike Postel, right? I'm under the gun. I look down at pocket fives and I just raise any good hand when I play poker. I don't like limping in. You'll see me do it maybe one out of 150 times. And in this hand, I raise it up under the gun with pocket fives. And as we've talked about before, you're gonna see multiple players going to the flop, which A means you're in a good game, and B means you probably need to be raising a little bit higher. Could have made it probably 30. But I flop a set, and now I'm glad I only made it 20. I'm not gonna check this, I'm gonna bet this. I like keeping the lead, and the small blind just open fold, so that's one less player that can pay us off, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna bet $50 here. We get quickly called by the cutoff. It's a round to the button who also calls. We're starting to build a good pot with the set. This could be a really good hand. Big blind has to decide. Man, I hope he raises. Nope, he gets out of the way. Three players to the turn. And it's a 10. When you flop a set, I would suggest you just keep betting almost all of the time. And I decided to check only because I thought it was pretty likely somebody had a 10, not because I was like, oh, I made a full house, now I'm gonna slow play it. I just thought they'd have a 10 a lot of the time on the turn and bet it. Turns out they didn't because they both checked behind. And now it's time to go for some value against maybe a straight or someone who did slow play a 10, which would have been horrible. And I bet $220, and I get raised by the same guy that tried to bluff me with ace high. He only left himself 150 behind. He bet 650 off an $800 stack. So when I put them all in, he's like, oh my God, I should have just called. I assume he had a straight, and we get paid off with our full house. 
I think about 80% of the time I actually just bet the turn and you probably should too. Tell me that's not Mike Postel. Look, he's putting on bone conducting headphones. What is going on? I thought this guy was banned from everywhere. I'm pretty sure that's Mike Postel. Me too, buddy, me too. Where's Joey Ingram when we need him? Moving on to this hand, there was a raise and I decided to call from my straddle with 10-7 of diamonds. I'm gonna flop a pair and a flush draw. Flop is jack, seven deuce with the jack deuce of diamonds. I'm always gonna check, I'm not gonna lead in this spot, but I am gonna check raise. He might fold a hand like ace queen that has pretty good equity against me. So I check raise to $75. The villain thinks and calls, we're gonna need a diamond. Let's see the turn, it's a four of clubs. Well, being that it's not an overcard, I still feel pretty good about my hand. I can hit a seven, a 10, or a diamond and definitely have the best hand. So I'm gonna keep betting and I bet 200 and he calls. We need a diamond. It's a queen and that's actually a pretty bad card. If he had ace queen or king queen, we're in pretty bad shape. And I'm not gonna explain why it is I decided to bet this river. I had to keep some information to myself, but I did decide to bet $400 on the river with just a seven. He calls, I show my hand, and he mucks his cards. He says he had a worse seven. This isn't GTO. This is what my buddy Jason Somerville calls street poker. And now I'm up to about $5,400. Dude, seriously, I sat next to this dude. Those are bone conducting headphones. I looked it up on Best Buy. Look, bone conduction. What is he doing now? He's looking at his crotch. Are you guys ready for some more street poker? So in this hand, there's a button straddle of 25 and the big blind calls. I'm in the cutoff and I have 10, eight suited. Oh, hey, look, I limped. I just said I don't do that very often. Okay, well, whatever. So we go uh, four ways to the flop for $25. 10-8 suited in the cutoff. Let's flop something. And guess what? If you watch this channel, I have a pair and I have a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. So I'm what? Never folding. They check to me. I go ahead and bet $55. Button folds pretty quickly. It's over to the big blind. I'm gonna bet this flop with any pair, any draw, and now I get check raised by the big blind. I go ahead and call, but I'm a little concerned. And I turn 10 of hearts. I was really expecting to turn something like a flush draw, a straight draw. Turning a 10 is fine unless this guy has king 10 and he checks to me after check raising. I wanna go ahead and bet, charge him if he just has a king. He's most likely to think that I have a king. It seems unlikely that I should have a 10 as a second pair and I call to check raise. So I go ahead and bet $300. Maybe he just has queen jack for a straight draw. He thinks for a while. He actually went into the tank for quite a while before check raising me a second time. So I call and we're gonna see the river. The river's a nine, so queen jack gets there. This doesn't change much if he just has a hand like king queen. He checks to me and I just check behind. He shows ace king and I take it down. On that river, I was just scared to get check raised again. What's this dude doing? He's in a hand. Check out my website, raiseyourclothing.com for poker t-shirts, hats, and hoodies. I straddled this hand under the gun for $20 and the button raises to $100. The small blind flats the $100 and I look down at queens. Holy moly. Definitely gonna raise and I'm gonna make it big. These are the spots in these games that you really gotta blast it. And it's not that I want anyone to fold. I want them to call, but they have to pay the price to try to chase my queens down. Okay, let's get a good flop. Oh, that's perfect. They can call me with tons of different things. When you see a flop like this that has a lot of draws, but no made hands, this is what you want. You want people to have draws and call you. I bet $450, a small down bet, and only the button calls. 
Now that turn card starts to worry me. He could have a straight. It would have been an open ender on the flop with queen jack. But now we just have to start worrying about two pair combinations along with pair and straight draw combinations. I'm gonna check this over to him and I'm probably gonna call any bet. Unless he had only a flush draw, that turn card should have increased his equity with some sort of straight draw, but he checks behind. And the river's a jack. I have a straight now. I don't think it's likely this guy has king queen. He could have called the flop with king queen of spades, but he's way more likely to have some sort of two pair combination. So I'm gonna value bet this river. I decided on $1,200. It's over to the button. And he lets it go. Take it down. Now my stack's up to $6,000. Wait, what's this cable? Is this an RFID table? Oh no, that's just my charging cable. The guy who may or may not be Mike Postel is all in. He's at risk for a couple hundred bucks. It's a multi-way pot. Oh, look how comfortable he is. How smug. He's just leaning back because he knows he has the best hand. Oh, he shows the guy next to him. Oh, like that's okay. Look at this guy. He thinks it's impossible he's gonna lose. It's a multi-way pot and on the flop, the guy next to him bets enough to get heads up. Postal shows aces. The other guy shows jacks and he rivers a flush. So Postal's gonna lose the hand. Okay, well then there's no way that's Mike Postal. Hey, tell Poppy the podcast is canceled. Look at these stacks on this side of the table. Man, this thing's gonna flip. And here's my stack, not looking as strong as before. Okay, back to some hands. Under the gun straddles 25 and the player on his left makes it 80 to go. But then I look down at ace king. You know I'm gonna bomb this. I make it 300 to see a flop. I don't like raising small. You guys know I like going big. You gotta punish these guys. Make them call you with ace queen for $300. Okay, we go heads up to the flop. Wow. King, king, four. There is a flush draw, but I've got trip kings and I have the ace of diamonds. I'm gonna down bet a bit. I make it 200 to go. Under the gun calls. Turns the queen of spades. Man, that's kind of a bad card. If he had king queen, we are in big trouble. I'm just gonna check behind and get some value on the river. The river's a clean card, the deuce of spades. If he bets, I'll just call, but since he's checking, I'm gonna bet for value. What do you think's a good size? I decided to bet $300. He quickly calls. I show ace king, and he mucks. This is one of the most interesting hands of the entire evening. Two players heads up, building a pot. They get to the river. There's a check from the out of position player and the in position player bets $800. And that's where things get weird. Number two aces, I'm on the board. Dude, are you gonna sit there and follow for five minutes? Are you serious? Like, is that even a thing? That's so insane, dude. He just, God, he just wants everyone's time. He only went for five minutes. The out of position player tanked for over four minutes and then ripped it in for $2,400. Here, I'll show, I'll show you this one. I'll show you a pair. Oh, sorry, two pairs, two pairs, sorry. I'll show you two pairs, so I'll show you. The out of position player shows the three of clubs, which is bottom pair on the flop. I think he flopped a boat and slow played it. What do you think? I told you, bro. Oh, what? You Come in. On. Yeah, a pair of jacks wins a $6,500 pot. Okay, in this hand I have two tens in the small blind. There was an under the gun straddle and the button raised to 150. I flat in the small blind and the under the gun straddle also calls. We're going four ways to the flop, $600 pot. 
Oh, I flop a 10! I'm gonna check this. Hopefully the button bets again and we can check raise and create a huge pot. No, don't check behind! Okay, the turn's a queen. Okay, it's the queen of hearts, so there's no flush. There's also no straight possibility. Unless this guy checked queens behind, we should have the best hand. I'm gonna take over the lead. I bet $300 on the turn. The under the gun player costs $300 and it's over to the cutoff who seems to be thinking about something. The cutoff raises me to $1,200. Now this wasn't the preflop raiser. That guy folded on the button after the raise. This guy could have two pair or some sort of combo draw that he turned. I only have $2,200 and I'm gonna just rip it in his face, and I hope he calls. I'm all in. Since the flop checked around, I would bet this queen of hearts definitely improved the cutoff's hand. The other player gets out of the way, the cutoff calls, I show my set of tens, the river's a four, and he shows a set of threes, set over set on the flop. I have one more ridiculous hand to show you. Watch this pot growing and growing on an ace four six six board. The river is a queen and they go check check and he shows ten seven high and it's the best hand. Just like every other video you'll notice that as we go towards the later parts of the session people are gonna straddle bigger and bigger and that includes myself. There's a button straddle by me of $50, the big blind calls, the player on my right and the cutoff makes it 200. I call with ace jack suited, as does the big blind. I flop a flush draw, it goes check, check, and I decided I'm just gonna check. I probably bet here something like 98% of the time, but I decided to check this time and I'm immediately awarded by turning a flush. Oh, and the cutoff bets now. So the cutoff bet's 250, I'm done slow playing, I'm gonna make it 650 to go. The big blind folds and the cutoff calls 650. That's pretty much a brick river. The cutoff checks, I start putting my army together and I bet $1,400. Hopefully this guy slow played some sort of king or a set but he folds, we pick up the pot. I felt like he could only call the river if he had actually slow played a big hand. That's why I went so big. Speaking of big, I've got pocket queens here in the big blind. There was a $50 straddle, which meant the small blind went first, and then next I raised to 150, and I got heads up against the button. I flop a set, but look how scary this board is. King, queen, nine, with two clubs. I gotta see about this flop. I gotta charge this guy, and he raises me to $600. If this dude has jack 10 and flopped a straight, he's just gonna get my whole stack. I decide to make it $1,700, and he just insta folds. Guys, you can't be afraid in these spots. You gotta put pressure on people. This hand is the exact same situation. There's a button straddle of 50, and I'm in the big blind. And again, I make it 150 to go. Under the gun calls. We get around to the button and he also calls. We're going three ways to the flop, $500 pot. And I flop an ace. On some flops, I like to check my aces, but this isn't one of them. I'm betting 225 for value and I hope to get heads up against a worse ace. The under the gun player folds and the button decides to go to the turn. The turn is a six of diamonds. Now we have straights and flush draw possible, but I can still bet for value against a hand like ace 10 or ace nine, so I bet $400. So we're to the button and he quickly calls. The river's a 10, it doesn't bring in the flush, it doesn't add to the straight possibilities, but it does make one of the worst aces now better than mine, and the button just bets $1,400. I go into the tank for a while. I actually think this is a board I can let go of this hand. I don't see any missed draws. 
Mostly I just see hands that beat me and I let it go. That one hurt, but I think he has the best hand. And he shows 9-4 high! This is my stack at the end of the session. I won $3,100. And no, this isn't reused footage. If you guys like my video, please hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Please check out RazorClothing.com for poker t-shirts, hats, and hoodies.